All right, first thing, everybody hear me okay? Because I really don't want to use the loudspeakers. Much more comfortable doing it this way. This is just so they can have it on the recording, I think, they have it recorded. So just, everybody can hear me, all right? We're good? All right, I'll, I'll speak loud. I'll stand right here in the middle. So will Jimmy as well. So uh, I want to tell you, I really appreciate everybody being here. This is a great show up, uh, great, great thing for us, great for the school. Just really appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule to be here. And um, hopefully uh, a couple of things we say hit some nerves maybe a little bit or hit your heart a little bit, make you think about a few things. Um, pretty much everything I'm going to talk to you about quickly today is just from life's experiences, things that I've learned through time that we both have, and just share some feelings and thoughts on you on a couple, couple topics here. And again, hopefully it, it just kind of makes you think a little bit about something that you might help you and maybe help other people in your world and your life, something like that. Um, uh, if you have a phone with you, uh, just please shut it off. Uh, you will be using them in a minute for something, but just shut them off. They don't ring. If you could do that for me, that'd be great. You got the second act. The second act's always better. All right, we did this on Tuesday. We thought it went pretty good, but it's always better the second time, you think, because we get to work out a few bugs like that. One thing I didn't do on the first one, and I don't know if I need to. It sounds kind of conceited to say I don't need to, but I didn't say who I was. Uh, I know a lot of you, so... I think a lot of you know who I am, but I'm Coach Bugby. I'm the men's lacrosse coach here. And uh, I didn't even say anything about that last week. So I just was assuming people had some idea. They read the email, maybe knew who I was. But that's who I am. And Jim Warnock is an alum who I'm going to go talk a little bit more about in a minute and uh, go from there. First of all, I want to appreciate, I want to tell Springfield College in general how much I appreciate this opportunity. Uh, when, when you're presented with the humanics uh, position, uh, I mean, to me, it's a, a tremendous honor. I was cre incredibly humbled by it when I received it. A lot of it's because I know a lot of the former humanic professors. Uh, I actually looked at a list right after I got it of who had served in that position past 80 years. All kinds of some tremendous people that I have a ton of respect for who I think are like, a lot of them are real pillars of the college over the years. And it's just really impressive for me personally and, 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 and humbling, to really, to be put in that group with those folks. So I, I humbly accepted it when I was offered it. And one of the things I love about the position is you have a lot of flexibility, a lot of freedom in it. They don't pigeonhole you into something and say, you gotta talk about this or gotta talk about that. It's really humanics based. And a lot of it I think is just how you feel about humanics, what it means to you, and anything, kind of what direction you wanna go with it. Um, you hear the word humanics a lot. I'm not sure what that means, what, what that conjures up to you in your mind. To me, a lot of it's leadership, servant leadership, selfless leadership. It involves the triangle a lot, the mind, body, spirit, all interacting together, all working together. Ideally, excelling at all three, not selling at two out of the three, but three out of the three. You know, and for some, the spirit's really important, the body, the mind, and how they all kind of work simultaneously. And at the end of the day, I think humanics is about being the best possible person you can be. And I think when all three of those are working in unison, and you really got a good handle on those three, you are the best person you can be. And that's really what a lot of this is about, is just being that good person and being doing a lot of right things for a lot of right people in your life. Um, for Jimmy and I, humanics, you know, I, about three years ago, I started doing a couple of talks. I talked to all the athletes a couple of years ago. And I used the word show up in that talk. I talked to a couple of bas the basketball teams, volleyball, some other teams I've talked to on campus. And I've used that word show up a lot. That's been a big word in my life for the last several years. And for me, showing up, as Craig said, when we talked the other day, Dr. Poison, we talked about it. Uh, is there a, in my opinion, I don't know if there's a better word to find in humanity, just showing up. Showing up for others. And in turn, they show up for you through all life's challenges and circumstances and highs and lows and good and bad and just consistently doing that. And that's really what we're going to talk a little about is what that all means to Jimmy and I. Um, when I was, uh, as, soon as, they, as soon as they said, you're going to have this position, I knew exactly what we were going to talk about. I was actually even at, at the end of the year, there's a presentation for the past humanities professor. They, saw, they talk and they introduced a new one. But as I went to that last year for Dr. Coughlin, I ran into our president in front of the tent, and she said to me, uh, congratulations on your position. Do you know what you're going to talk about? I said, oh, yeah, I do. She goes, show up, right? I said, absolutely. That's exactly what I'm going to talk about. So 
you know, she gets it, a lot of you get it, a lot of you probably aren't surprised it's the topic I've chosen. And that's where we're going to go with that. Uh, but when, as soon as I decided to do this, I knew I wanted to do it with an alum. And I'll tell you why. When you're here, you're getting a lot of great information over your four years about humanics, about being a good person, about service to others, leadership position. You're hearing that over and over again. And there's so many opportunities for so many of you to exercise that and learn more about it while you're here. And what I love about Jimmy, which is true of a lot of, a lot of alums could also fit this category, and a lot of you will fit this category as well. When you're all said and done, the four years are over, you're not checking at the door and leaving. You're bringing it with you. And when you bring it with you, that's how you become a great father, a great husband, a great wife, a great mother, whatever profession you choose. You take this information and you use it and you continue all through life and you teach your own children about that and it perpetuates ways. It goes and goes and goes. And to me, Jimmy, when he was here, and he's going to talk a little bit about his, his background here when he was here, some of the things he did. But in my, in my opinion, he embodied it when he was here. Absolutely embodied it. He, he jumped into it with both feet. He, uh, it just it defined him. All right? He just learned, he, he dwelt on it, he got better at it, he thought about all these things associated with it, and he started living his life with that sort of being a guidance for him. And no way did he leave it at the door. He took it with him. You know, right now he's a, a physical education and health adaptive PE teacher in the South Windsor school system. And uh, he worked with youth teams and high school teams, he's coached at the college level, and everywhere he's gone, he's preached humanics in the way he goes about his life, how he acts as a, uh, as, as a, as a, as a father, as a, as a husband, he's lived it. And, um, and he also lives, it also lives up to my philosophy and my coaching. And I've said this, my guys are probably sick of me hearing it, but when I recruit you to come play here, I, it's about, I'm really more concerned about you for the next 40 years, not the next four years. What happens after your four years here is really what really uh, it's all about for me. You know, I, I, heck, I want to win some games. Winning's a lot more fun than losing. There's no question about it. But I never, we never worry about it. We never talk about winning. It's a byproduct. Good people will work hard. Good people will push each other. Good people will show up for each other. Good people will get it done. And then the wins will take care of themselves. And really, that's all I really care about is helping these young men that I'm working with be the best they can be when it's all said and done for the rest of their lives. And a lot of the humanics drives that philosophy for me. Um, all right, listen carefully if you would for me. These are, this is where I want to hit the, the rubber starting to hit the road a little bit right now. Life is very messy, all right? It gets complicated. Sometimes you bumble way through it, you do the best you can. And, um, and I've, learned, I've learned through life that you're going to get thrown curveballs. There's no way around it. You're going to get some curveballs from me, it's hopefully not too major, but at all different levels, whether it be family situations, dynamic family situations, or jobs, or economic situations. I mean, the COVID situation, I feel, I, honestly, I feel really fortunate, believe it or not, that I'm getting to speak to you, hopefully on the tail end of the COVID. Maybe not, we're not there yet, but I feel very fortunate that I got this opportunity to kind of address that a little bit, because I know it's been a life-changing situation for a lot of people. It's changed a lot for a lot of people. A lot of people, have, especially last year, did not have quite the college experience they were hoping for, Things at home might not have been quite the same. It's a lot of challenges associated with it. And hopefully we're getting, we're playing through it and can come out of it okay. But um, it's what I'm talking about as far as the curveballs that get thrown your way. I went to the commencement on, on, uh, on Sunday and the, uh, the commencement speaker is a woman who's the principal of Brookings School right down the street. She's an alum. She was fantastic. She was dynamic. She was awesome. And she had a quote in there that I told her, I was sitting right next to her on the podium and I said, I'm going to steal that quote. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I got it. It's really good because exactly what I'm going to talk about next week. It said, adversity is inevitable. Failure is an option. And I said, you're so right. Adversity is inevitable at some level. Hopefully not at high, high level, but at some level, adversity is inevitable. For me, 2018... I, uh, my wife and I, we lost our child, Lindsay, who is a student here, um, an alum here. She, um, she uh, had some complications developed from uh, giving birth to her third child. And no question, a life-changing event for my family. 
no question about it. And, you know, it just, I think it's God's way of being very, very good to us that sometimes we don't know about these things ahead of time. But I think that would be even worse if you knew that was going to happen. So I think you just, you get dealt with those things and then you just have to deal with them, have to work your way through it. The big crux to the show up speech or the show up theory today for you guys is what saved our lives and continue to save our lives are the support we had, the family, the friends, um, teammates. Uh, my, my, my lacrosse team in 2018 absolutely saved my life. We weren't even that good a team. We were pretty average in some ways. We didn't even win, we lost a lot of league games and those guys just bonded around a, a common cause. I really felt like they'd commit a lot of themselves to just being the best they can be for each other. They rallied and we get the third round of the NCAA tournament with, 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 with a, a kind of an average team, I think, in, compared to who we played. We, we, it was just really impressive, but it's really that team showing up for me in ways I will never, ever, ever forget. Incredible. But the big thing is when, when my wife and I got dealt this, this curveball, were we prepared for it? No, we weren't prepared for it. You cannot be prepared for it. But like I said, the support system that we had in place really, really, it made a lot of difference for us. And for you all, I want you to think about that. Not that you're anticipating you have something like this come your way, but you just don't know what tomorrow brings. No one knows what tomorrow brings. And are you prepared for it? And you have that system in place, that village in place with people who are gonna show up for you and really be there for you. And one of the ways to see, to help make sure that happens or try to build that into place is you start that going. You show up for people now. You do that for other people, they're gonna do it in return for you. If you've already got yourself geared up and signaled in on that, that I need to be the best I can be for other people, I can show up for them uh, whenever possible, um, that'll foster it, it'll be contagious, it'll go both ways, and it'll be something you really will need to have and will have if you kind of put that effort into it. Um, like I said a minute ago, the second act is always better than the first act because you kind of think of some things you wish you'd said. Very good friend of mine, after he saw the, this online, got back to me and said, your speech was great, it was great you talked, you talked about adversity and all that kind of stuff. I would add one more thing, and, and after you said it, you're right, I, I'm gonna add this in, you're right. I'm talking about adversity and showing up for people in all those situations, but you want to show up for your friends in celebration as well, too. Enjoy some opportunity. Sometimes it's easier to show up for people when things are down, but when things go really well in their life, are you showing up for that, too? Because sometimes, you know, maybe you just say, ah, that's not important. They're fine because it's a happy moment. But how good does it mean for you to go to that wedding, to go to that event, to... And, and I'll tell you, listen, this is, this is real life now. This is where you pull your big boy pants up because sometimes it's hard to be happy for people, maybe when you're a little jealous, or you maybe your nose is a little joint uh, bent, because maybe they, maybe they got that, that starting job over you, or they got that position you wanted, or they had something in their life happening that you kind of feel like, man, I wish that was me. But being a good friend, you just, you know, you gotta, you gotta be big like that, and play through that, and say, it's not about me, I'm really happy for you, that you got this, or you got this, or this good thing's happening, or you had this in your life, and this is where you show up for them on both sides of it, not just when, the, when you're in the dark, on the dark roads or the valleys, in the hills too, when things are really good. It's really good to say, you know, I'm really happy for you. With that being said, I'm gonna introduce you to Jim Warnock. Thank, thank you so much, Coach. Um, everyone hear me all right? All right, uh, you know, there's moments in life where if you can kind of pause and, and hit, hit the pause button and be fully present in that moment and, and to hear all the, the kind words uh, that you shared towards me, Coach, I, I, I don't know if I'm capable of, of accurately expressing in words what that means, but it, it means the world. Um, so like Coach said, my name's Jim Warnock. I grew up in Summers, Connecticut, right down the road. And when I stepped on campus here in 1996, I had no no inclination or fa could fathom that I'd be standing here 25 years later uh, with a, a life mentor um, and, and a friend who's helped me through so much. Um, so I'm honored to be here. Uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to, to give back. Um, and, and I hope it, uh, like Coach said, I, I hope it, 
hits somewhere where you're ready to take it and move forward with it. So a little bit about my story, right? And my story starts with watching people walk in and there's so many faces here now that were part of my story when I was here. Um, and, and that part is so incredibly refreshing. Because when, when you can come to back to a place 25 years later and shake some hands and see the same faces of the same people who have been showing up every day and putting into helping other people understand the impact they can have in the world, it allows you to anchor yourself and really have a foundation to leave here and go out and do things and impact people in great ways. Um, so for all of you here who uh, were part of my story, I thank you. And in your own little way, I wouldn't be here without you. Uh, so let's talk uh, about, about my story, right? So I, like I said, I grew up in Summers, Connecticut. This was the last place I wanted to go to college. My mom, like so many of our moms, is a complete pain and knew what I needed even though I didn't want to admit it. And I kind of was like, I'm not going there, Ma. It's 20 minutes away. I need to get away from you and Dad. I'm moving, to, we're going somewhere else. And on my first recruiting visit in 1996, it was legitimately, and I've shared this with you many times, Coach, it was the, okay, Ma, we'll go, and then you'll leave me alone afterwards, right? And that was the deal. And I stepped on campus, and from the minute people looked me in the face, they said hello, and they held doors. And at that moment, I started to, without knowing it, process what showing up meant. Because Springfield College gave me the opportunity to practice in so many little ways what it meant to be in service to others. Um, and I'm completely and, and utterly grateful for that opportunity. Coach mentioned curveballs, and I'd like to talk a little bit about one of my curveballs. And I was riding up here today. I taught a couple classes this morning, um, and then was riding up here, and you know, got here and was kind of looking around and, and just taking it all in, and trying not to like you know take what went really well on Tuesday and and not let it get away, be a whole lot different today. Um, but my wife is here with me today, and, and I looked at her, and I go, wow, it's, it's been eight years almost since my curveball. And she goes, your math's wrong, man. It, it's nine years. Um, so thank you for that. But my, my curveball happened on October 12th, or October 17th, 2012. Like Coach said, I teach phys ed. I teach phys ed at South Windsor High School. Seven, uh, about 7.25 in the morning, we were setting up for a soccer class that was going to take place on the front field. And the school sits back on a hill, and there's kind of an access road that kind of you use to get in and out. So a teaching colleague of mine and I, we grabbed all the stuff. We grabbed the bag of soccer balls, the cones, and we headed down to the field. And that required us to cross a road. So I'm walking down. We cross the road. We're going to the field to get it set up. And the next thing I remember is waking up in an ambulance, trying to figure out where I was. And then after I figured out that, spent the next year and a half trying to figure out again who I was. Because what had happened is we stepped across that road and the way the sun sets or the, and rises, the way the school's positioned, there's some horrible sun glare. Someone had just dropped off a student and was leaving the parking lot. They were doing about 30 miles an hour and they didn't, they didn't see us. So that led to a really cool dent in my head, some screws and some plates. And my wife does think I'm absolutely crazy when I say this. One of the coolest experiences of my life. Because I learned then how people show up. Up to that point, like I said, I was here and I was learning that, but I didn't really realize what it looked like, what it sounded like. And that's what I'm going to press you to do right now, because I live in a world of look like, sound like. For you athletes, or for those of you who are PE majors who want to someday teach and coach, it's all about look like, sound like. And I spend a lot of time talking to the young men I coach. Uh, when I say young, they're 12. I'll come back to that a little bit later. But trying to get them to understand, well, hey, what, it, what does it look like if we're going to play the game the right way? What's it look like and sound like if we're going to respect the game and our opponents the right way? What does it look like to carry ourselves in the, in the right way? Give me the observable behaviors. You know, there's a quote that constantly comes up that one of my friends would always use. And it's a, a Ben Franklin quote. And it says, well said is, is better than or well done is better than well said. And that's what I work with with the teams I coach in my nine-year-old and 12-year-old. And if they were here right now, they'd roll their eyes at me and I'd be like, dude, you didn't just roll your eyes because uh, they're tired of hearing it. But that's what I'm gonna ask you to do throughout today. I'm gonna ask you to constantly take that concept of showing up and attach physical, observable behaviors to it. What does it look like for you? What does it sound like? All right, and those are, those are some big questions that, that we're going to come back to. 
Uh, in the whole process of this and, you know, on that day in that hospital, you know, I looked up in the ICU at one point and, and saw him standing at the end of my bed 20 years after I was done playing for him. And there were so many people, people here that sent me notes, sent me cards, checked on me without any request, just put energy and time into me and mine just because they knew I might have needed it in that moment. All right, so again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna press you, and maybe you've had an experience like that. Maybe you've been in a situation where people showed up for you and that's easy to, to kind of rec recall what that looks like and feels like. But through this whole thing, I kind of established in thinking and reading and spending five months in a, on the recliner because that's all I was allowed to do for five months because after the brain surgery, watching videos, reading books. And I came up with my three C's for showing up. I made, a, I made a crack the other day and I, it would be true. That's right. The things that are funny in life are funny because they're kind of true at points, right? The, the, my three C's could also be my report card here on multiple semesters. <laughs> All right. But uh, we'll get into that later if you want. See me. Um, but there's three C's that really represent what showing it up is for me and kind of why we do it and how we do it. And the first one is it connects people. And as I was thinking about all this, like where, where, did I, where did I get this? Where did I learn this? And it happened on that very first day, that day in 1996. It happened again on Tuesday. I love it. I, I got out of the car right here and I, I, I didn't even have two feet on the ground yet. And someone's like, hey, how's your day going? And it was Michelle, the security guard. And she was all right. I was like, oh my God, where'd she, where'd she come from? Uh, and I was like, oh, I'm great. How are you? We had a quick conversation and I walked around the front of the building and, and I'll touch on that again in a little bit but I started to learn that here. And that connectedness to me always comes back to one simple behavior that I learned here that I've, that I've really taken with me kind of by accident. And I talked about it on Tuesday and I got texts from former teammates. I didn't tell you this this morning, coach. I got texts from four or five former teammates. I can't say former. When you're a teammate, you're a teammate for life. So former is not the right word, but I got texts from teammates going, dude, I teach that in my elementary school every day. Um, and it's that concept of holding a door, all right? Like we've all done that for someone or had someone do it for us here. Again, I'll tell you, I want, this is the last place I wanted to be when I was looking at schools. And when I showed up and people looked me in the face and people held doors, I got in the car afterwards and I said, all right, I got to eat. I got to eat a little crow here, Ma. Uh, we'll come back and look again. But that holding the door concept for me is so simple. And sometimes, you know, Coach and I talk a lot. The other day we were talking about leadership. And sometimes we put leadership up on this huge pedestal. And we make it into this huge thing where you have to be this incredibly dynamic person to be a leader. But you really don't. We can all lead something every day in some way. And I think sometimes the concept of showing up falls into that same category. So I go back to the simple things. And that's holding a door. How many times on your experience here have you been walking down the sidewalk and someone 10, 15 yards ahead of you stops, gives time of their day just to wait for you so they can hand you the door? All right, so the first C, like I said, is connectedness. And two people get something out of that, both the giver and the receiver, right? The receiver gets a concept of, hey, I'm seen. They know I'm here. And don't we all want to be seen? Right? And that's a big one. They know that there's people here that will help them. And that's demonstrated just by holding a door. It creates connections. For the giver, the giver gets a sense of empathy. And knowing that a single little action can impact someone else positively. And I work with a lot of, a lot of high school kids and, and teams. And we spend more time talking about how to be great teammates and how we can help those other people. Right? So both the giver and the receiver get something. And what I learned over my time here, too, is that when you take that with you and you leave here, connectedness leads to inclusion. And when you include other people, you create incredible communities. And that's where great culture comes from, from connection and inclusion. All right. The second C for me, coach already touched on a little bit. And that's it's contagious. It's sticky, right? How many of you have had someone hold the door for you and within two hours held the door for someone else? Right? It's a simple thing. And it's like we talk about cliches, right? And this is that cliche of throwing a rock in the pond and it sends out all those ripples. And we could say that's cliche and we don't have to pay attention to it. It's not real. But cliches have been around forever. 
and they hold true because there's truth inside of them. And that just a simple act of holding a door or saying hello to someone, how your day going, is important, right? And it's contagious. And it caught me off guard because after I got the, the ninja security guard right out here, right? I still, she, I was like, whoa. I walked around the building, I passed five students, I got five hellos, and I had three students hold doors for me. And I went, whoo, all's good in the world because I know there's Springfield College people still out here doing it the right way, okay? The last C for me stands for courage. Courage. You have, you have to have courage. Now, do you have to have courage to hold the door? Not unless it's a really heavy door, right? Do you have to have courage to say hello? Not really. But the holding the door and the saying hello are points of practice, little chances to get better at it. Because there'll be a time, there'll be a time in your life where you, you show up and you've got nothing, nothing to say, nothing you can do to make it better. And in that sense of having nothing comes a sense of vulnerability. And that sinking feeling right here, for me it's right here, that sinking feeling. Because if you're like me, you're a fixer. You're a fixer. Anyone else here fixers? When someone has a problem, someone I care about, someone in my tribe, one of my students, one of my players. My self-worth at times is too grounded in, can I help fix their problem? And it's not about fixing the problem. And most of the time I can't do that. And then once I realize that, I get hit with this wave of helplessness. But it's not about me, it's about them. And sometimes in those moments where you have nothing to say, it's just enough in a phrase that I learned from you, coach, through countless conversations, just be, just be, just be there. You don't have to do anything. That's uh, it's kind of my part at this point. I'm, I'm gonna pass it back off to you, coach. Thank you for listening. I apologize for that misstep. Coach earlier asked you to, take, uh, to shut off your phones. Can you take them out right now? So we, we both kind of voiced a couple points about the look like, sound like, right? And showing up. I need you to go through that Rolodex mind of yours and identify five names. And, and if you're really lucky like me, it's not a list of five, it's, it's a list of 50, 100. But five people that you can recall right now who showed up for you for some, in some way, shape, or form when you needed it. Whether it was during a curveball, whether it was during a celebration, right? Teacher, coach, parent, guardian, brother, sister, pastor, rabbi. Who was that? I'll give you a few seconds. Just jot it down, you're not gonna share it with anyone. Throw it right in that phone. You know, maybe it's a neighbor down the street. Maybe it's one of your best friend's moms. Because your mom's great, but sometimes someone else's mom could hear you a little different. Now that you have those five names, I want you to kind of come back to those at some point today, tomorrow. And reach out. And just extend a thank you. A thank you. Hey, you know what? This went down in my life. I really appreciate that you were there for me. Right? Someone that did the, it, it doesn't have to be a big thing either. But the goal is to reach out to those people and say thank you. And say, I appreciate you. For a couple of reasons. One, 
when someone does something for us, we, we should say thank you, right? It's like everything you learned, you, you, you need to know in life you learned in kindergarten, and that's one of them. Just say thank you, right? The second thing that comes up with that, though, is, again, if, if we look at it, the giver and the receiver, you're saying thank you. But for me, in my world, when I start saying thank you to people, the stressful points in my life, the anxiety points in my life, the points in my life where I feel isolated, when I feel stuck, bring to me a whole different level of gratitude. Because as I'm saying thank you, uh, I'm going to single someone out right now. I had the chance to thank someone. I thanked you earlier, Coach, when you came in, right? And you looked right at me, Coach Loon, and you said, oh, you got to thank me. And I said, Coach, when I was coaching at Western New England and you were the AD, we had two, three, four, five-minute conversations probably five times a week, and I would go home and write stuff down from those conversations, right? So I'm saying thank you to Coach, but I'm also saying, hey, I know I have someone in my corner, and knowing that that person's in my corner now, I can take on the world, right? So we both get something out of that thank you and it means the world to the person you're saying it to, but don't discount what it does for you. All right, so come back to that list at some point in the next couple days and it's a challenge now. It's a challenge I, I tell my students all the time. I don't know, I don't know if you're gonna do this. It doesn't really matter, that's not what it's about. This is a challenge and if you wanna take it, reach out and say thank you. Sorry, coach. So a couple questions, that's the first one. Jimmy, just address that. Who has showed up for you? But I think a key word with that is who's continuing showing up for you. That's really a big word to go with that. Who is continually showing up for you? Then I got a couple other questions for you. Who do you need to show up for? That's what, you don't have to write this down. Just, I'm just gonna tell you to think about it. But in, think carefully, who do you really think you need to show up for and the third question has kind of hit me between the eyes the most, I think, of these questions in some ways. Looking, i got a few more years on most of you, so I get to think back a little bit further back than most. But who do you wish you'd showed up for? Thinking back of some situations, you know, I've got some friends who've had some pre major tragedies in their life as well. <coughs> and I was kind of there for them for a little bit, but maybe not, I didn't, I didn't keep it going, you know? and maybe wish I had done more of that. So who do I wish I'd really shown up? On that note though, I wouldn't beat yourself up too much about that, we're all humans. It's something I'm working on, I'm trying to get better at. Just learn from it, that's all. Just say, well, you know, next time I'm gonna do a better job at that. Just learn to learn from it. All right, listen please, listen carefully, because to me this is what it's all about, about showing up. This is it right here. Showing up is intentional. It's intentional. It's something you go out of your way to do. You make sure you do. It's intentional. It's something you think about. I know I need to do this, and I'm going to intentionally do it. But here's a big key, and I can tell you this from experience. It needs to be sustained. It needs to be repetitive. If it's here today and gone tomorrow, it doesn't seem to be this really worth the same thing. I've been to wakes. I've been to funerals. It's a sad occasion. You give that person a hug. You pat them on the back, you say, I'm, I'm so sorry. You give them, say all the right things. Cause you're, you're, you're generally, you know, it's genuine. It's very genuine. It's real. You might go home and send them some flowers. You might go home and send them a card. But then a month from then, you, you just stop. Because we all get busy, life goes on. And it's really, I'm as guilty as you are. So I'm not, I'm not preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself as well. It has to be repetitive. You gotta keep coming back to it. But the thing is, it takes on many shapes. It's not always have to be the same. It doesn't have to be maybe initially at that high level where you're just really sympathetic and all that. It can just take on much simpler shapes. It can be simply a text message. It can be a phone call. It could just be a pat on the back. You know, I know, I know, you know, just how you doing? I'll give you a perfect example. If you, if you don't know Teddy France, he's a guy on campus you really should get to know. He's a wonderful human being. I'm coming from my car like the first week of school walk up in the PE complex, he pulls up in his car, rolls the window down, he looks me right in the eye, and he goes, Keith, how was your summer? And I know what he's asking. I know exactly what he's asking. He wasn't asking me how my golf game is. He wasn't asking me if I had any cool vacations. He looks me in the eye and says, how was your summer? Lindsay passed away on the 4th of July. Summers are very challenging, pretty challenging all the time, but this is kind of one of those times. Summers are challenging for us that kind of time of year. And I know exactly what he was asking me with those simple words, how was your summer? And I just, you know, that's all, that was showing up for me. It was very simple, very intentional. And I just said, Teddy, we're okay, thank you. 
but that meant a lot. It's just a little thing like that. And how far does that go? Like, how you doing? Been thinking about you, you know, things like that. And you know, it's just something that goes far away. Like Jimmy mentioned, I love that whole concept of just being. When Jimmy came to the hospital, when J with Jane and I, he didn't know what to say. How would you know what to say? He just came in and was he just he, he, he was being. He was just there, physically there. And that's sometimes all you need to do right now. Um, my wife is here today. Thank you, Jane, for coming. I appreciate it. She'll appreciate this a lot. I think one of the best things you can do sometimes is just listen. She's probably shaking her head right now. Just listen. How many times has Jane brought me some kind of issue or talked to me about something? And of course, like Jim said earlier, being a stupid guy, I try to fix it. Doesn't need to be fixed. I just need to shut up and listen. And she reminds me of that quite often. And I try to work on that. And maybe for a week or two, I'm really good at it. Then a week later, she's like, shut up and listen. Because that's all we need to do sometimes. The best thing you can do to show up for something sometimes is just be there. Don't try to fix it. Just listen. Just put your arm around them and just be. And that's sometimes hard to do because everybody likes to fix things, you know? All right. In my team, we, wear, uh, we, we have a couple guys every week that practice in, this ye in a yellow helmet. We've been doing that for the last three years. And really what it is, it's just a symbol in our team where we present it to a couple athletes in our program. They wear it, they practice it for a week. And it's really just a symbol of a, a teammate that's showing up for his teammates every day. They're just showing up. They're, they're, they're working as hard as they possibly can. They're lifting people up. They're just being great teammates and they're just showing up for their teammates. It's not an MVP award. You don't have to score five goals in a scrimmage or in a game to wear that. Matter of fact, usually it's not that person. Sometimes it's just someone who's just working their tail off. And for us at the college level, this is huge because it's what's going on off the field too. It's not between four and six. That's easy to judge somebody. But what's going on in the cafeteria, in the dorm, in the classroom? It's someone who's just showing up every day, not taking a day off, getting it done all the time. And what we do new this year, which I'm really excited about, we gave it to two athletes yesterday. They're going to practice in it for a few days, and those two athletes are going to decide who gets it next. And then we're just going to go through the whole season like that. And it's really just a show-up award, basically, for um, what it's all about. So I've been doing this for a while with my team, and Jimmy, who's going to talk to you in a second here, um, took it to another le little, little different level. He started doing these talks about showing up and this whole spiel that we're doing today a little bit with some youth teams, some high school teams, and he developed this yellow bracelet which I think is great, because not everybody wears a helmet. That doesn't really work, maybe for a lot of type programs, a lot of teams. But it could be, it could be anything for any team. It could be a t-shirt, it could be anything. Um, but with the, with the yellow bracelet, uh, it's, it's kind of like the helmet in a way. You get to present that, but it, you can take it to another level. I'm gonna let you explain a little bit what we're gonna do afterwards with it as well. Thank you, Coach. Uh, yeah, so I, after countless conversations and sometimes endless conversations, um, and Coach is one of the few people in my house that I'm allowed to talk to on the phone as long as I want, whenever I want, without getting, I just go, it's, it's Coach. And, all right. Uh, so we had had a couple of those conversations. I came up and I saw what they were doing and talked and reconnected with the guys on the team. And I got in my car and I said, there are moments, again, in life where you can kind of go, this is kind of a big deal. And when you find those moments and you're able to recognize that in real time, they make some extra special. And I said, when you, when you find an authentic, genuine thing like this, you don't, you don't let it go by. And I'm kind of like, I got to bring, I got to find a way to bring this to the students I teach, the kids I coach. Um, and that was it. So I started playing around some ideas. I called coach. I said, would you be okay with this? He said, yeah. So we started it. Ordered some bracelets. Uh, we were scheduled to do it that spring with an in-town lacrosse team of third and fourth graders. Uh, then that coach alluded to, COVID hit, so that got put on hold. Um, but we've done it with that team, we've done it with other teams. But we had to wrinkle, so it's the same thing. You, you showed or proved or displayed through those observable behaviors that you showed up. And we'd pull a few uh, athletes aside each day and be like, here you go, this is for you, you're doing a great job. But we'd also hand them a second bracelet and say, now the challenge is to go to your five people in their, in their phone. What are you going to do with this bracelet? Who are you going to say thank you to? 
And to do that with a group of 12 year olds can get kind of crazy and weird. But there's moments in coaching and teaching and parenting uh, where, you know, a lot of adults are gonna get this immediately. Uh, but it, some of the things I thought I had figured out and then I had kids and whoosh, right out the window with most of that, right? But there's moments where you challenge your athletes or your students or your children and you set the bar and you say, hey, here's how, this is, here's how I want it to go. And then they do that and then they look at you and you're like, uh-oh, I, I wasn't planning for it to go that well. So we handed these to 12 year olds and to try to get 12 year olds to go have that awkward conversation with a parent, with a teacher, with a coach, with someone, takes courage on their part. It takes courage on all of our parts. And if you haven't figured out that life is just one form of a reoccurring awkward conversation, one after another, well, write that down. I wish I knew that when I was your age. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. And over the last several years, one of my favorite quotes, I don't even remember where I, I heard it. I, I think it might've came from some random scroll on an Instagram account or something. But it said, hey, in life, sometimes you just need to be brave, brave enough to completely stink at something new. Because that takes guts. You know, in our game of lacrosse, it's like, are you brave enough to put the stick in your weak hand and throw it out of bounds? And with a 12 year old, that takes guts because you're putting yourself out there in front of your teammates, right? But it takes guts to show up every time it's something new and do it until it's not new anymore. So we had these conversations and then we asked them and I asked the players and the families of those players, if they're willing to share part of their story with us, shoot me a text, shoot me an email, take a video, take a picture, create an artifact that we can share. I had a 12 year old send me a text with a picture of him and his father saying, my dad shows up for me every day because he's battled alcoholism. This is a 12 year old. He battles alcoholism and he's winning and he's showing up for, for me and my mom every day. The stuff that came out of this, this grassroots kind of like, I, let's, let's have these conversations. And to be completely honest with you, it started out with having the conversations with my own two sons. That was the original goal. Like that's one of those parenting moments, like this is a big deal, we're gonna talk about this. Cause you need to be the best version of you possible in every moment and how you're gonna help others. So it took on a life its own and one team became two and two became three. Showed coach a text this morning, last Tuesday, you know, a friend of ours who had done it on a team that her son played on, her daughter plays soccer in a different town. She said, will you come talk to our team? I said, sure. I go, I gotta be honest with you, I don't have any bracelets. She goes, don't worry about it, I already ordered some. We showed up, I had a quick conversation. Last night I get a text from her, shared it with coach this morning. And when people shared stuff with me, that's all I did with it. Shot it to coach. Hey, people are showing up for each other. She sent me a text last night. They awarded, one of the teammates on their team awarded a bracelet to a girl who hasn't played a minute all season because she's been injured. The mom sent a text to, to the coach and said, my daughter's having the greatest time of her life and has never felt more valued, more cared about because she hasn't brought a skill set to a team, but she knows she's part of that team. And thank you for this opportunity. So that's the, that's the challenge now. On the tables over there, in front of the flowers, there's a bunch of these. Please take one, put it on, wear it every day. Wear it as a reminder that people have showed up for you, that there's five names in a phone, but that in big ways, in small ways, you can show up for others. And then we're gonna challenge you again to take a second one and go back to that, that list in your phone or that list in your head or that list in your gut and go have that conversation and say, thank you for showing up for me and tell them about what the bracelet means. And if you're willing to create an artifact, because Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, you're gonna get an email. And in that email is gonna be a way for you to share that. And one of coach's goals is to, uh, and one of our conversations is to put that out there. Well, what does it mean to the Springfield College community to show up? What does it mean to be there for other people? And I couldn't agree more with him. And, and it's, to me, it's, an, it's the observable, the look like, sound like 
behavior that sits right in the middle of that triangle balancing on a point. So that, that's the challenge. Uh, if you do it, great. If, if it's something where you don't choose to share, that's fine. It's okay. So the last thing I want to say, if you notice on the bracelets, it has um, the initials LBC on it. That's my daughter's initials. Show up is on both the helmet and the bracelet. That's on there because my daughter was a person who showed up. I've never met somebody who did it better than she did. I coached her from when she was a little girl. She showed up every day. Every day was the same, every game was the same. She captained every team she was ever on because she just gave it her best effort. Not saying she was always perfect by any means, none of us are, but her effort was always there. Her, 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 her energy was always positive. It was just, you got that every day from her. And, and when she got older, it carried her into life, certainly as a daughter, as a mother, as a wife, she just showed up for everything. And I'm not, this isn't about Lindsay, this isn't about her, it's just about what she represents. It's simply, I say it's the same thing with my guys with the helmet, it's not about her, it's about what she represents, just that attitude about showing up and getting after it. And she just really did a wonderful job with that. Um, that's why her initials are on that. She challenged me to show up for people. I'm just challenging you to show up for people. That's pretty much what we're here for today. So I thank you very much. You guys have been incredibly uh, attentive. I really appreciate it. And again, hopefully it's meaningful. Thank you. I'm going to pass this to you and go help Ryan out. Sorry oh, yeah. about missing that phone thing. Great catch. Thank you so much. It was, it was easy. It was. It was. I, I kind of like stepped away. I didn't transition was, my brain quickly. Yeah, but it was, it was easy because that's where I was going, you know? I don't think it didn't look like no, it. I caught it fine. I just feel bad. Thank you. Thank you. Don't. <laughs>